uh, hi everyone and uh, welcome back so in this video we are going to talk about query definition language okay so so queries we have already seen what kind of queries and mutations we are going to write now we will also also understand the schema definition language sdl okay what it is about because we have three things queries mutations and types this combines created as a schema and then we have a resolvers right so resolvers is a different things here we are talking about types right so types we are going to define with the help of sdl schema definition language which talks about the types of each and every property which you are defining in the type so like entities user can be a type and uh, the email password username first name last name these can be the the types of type string float integer boolean id right these can be the you can say call it as a primitive types but this is called as a schema definition language actually user is a resource and we are defining the types of the user type what all different scalar types that user type can have right so you can have like id name this is how we define the scalar types now user can be a type it has these two properties okay like photo id name url description rating and private these can be the different types so photo is of object type an object type can have obviously have the properties right uh, nullable or non nullable non nullable is like so here we have the string when you put a string exclamation that means the name property must be there description is a nullable property root queries so in the schema we have three things types queries and mutations so we talked about simple types like the primitive types the scalar types we call them or the object type like photo is an object type course user all these are object type scalar types is like the properties email first name last name which can points to either string boolean number float all these properties right those are scalar types so these are actually queries and this is a type this is like a, you can say the nested type type user we have defined which has a property uh, posted photos and posted photos is going to return a type array of photos so photos should also be not null and the array should also have the length greater than zero so whenever we see, you see this symbol that means this is required this will be there in the response okay so this is a nullable list and nullable values now we see the difference this is non nullable list with of nullable values this is non nullable list of non nullable values so you see the difference of this exclamation symbol everywhere this is nullable photos can be null of this nullable values i mean this is this list can be empty simple this list this array will always be there the values can be empty this array will be there the photos will be there and the array will also be there i mean this is non nullable list with non nullable values so everywhere wherever we are defining the types object we will always use this symbol to define the the properties right so this is the enum enum also you can define so we can define object scalar types enum interface unions all these things we can define in the type definitions okay this is like type photo posted by user so user is another type photo we have created as another type type user user is a type which has this posted photos which will which will return many photos in an array it's like one to many many to many like we have the student right student has will have a multiple course schedule and every course will have a multiple student i mean it's not kind of a database relationship it's just like a type relationship we are showing while defining them like okay so this city to city and all these things we can just these are just simple examples city has a name and connections and then connection has a distance into because these are the nested types city has a name okay let's say user type user has a name and address addresses can be point to another nested type address can have a street name uh, street name street address house number state city country all these things right so we can also have a nested types now another thing is a mutation so till now we have talked about scalar types object types enums and queries and this is a mutation type right so type mutation uh post photo and it is going to return boolean so these queries and mutations we are going to define in the resolver 
mutations can or may or may not take the argument but most of the time mutation means you are changing like updating user by id updating course by id so it will take most of the time this argument okay so you can also create an input custom input type because uh, in the mutations we are passing some payload object right like user update user update user will require email password or first name id or something so that object you can consider as a custom input type okay, so these are all about all these things like how we are defining and we will also see this like for testing the rest apis we have the postman so testing the graphql we are going to have this i graphql console where we will be sending these queries and mutations right here input is actually custom type which is sending the name description category in the payload of this post photo mutation okay so i mean this, this is all about the schema definition language because types queries and mutations combines create a schema for our graphql server we talked about